We're going to be talking about how to have blessed family. Everyone that is interested, make some noise this morning and say hallelujah. How to have a blessed home. And we're going to see the first part of how to have a blessed home. Blessing. Somebody say blessing. Blessings. In Matthew chapter 5, you're going to find something very interesting, which is the, they call it the, the Sermon Mount. Am I right? Is that how they say it? The Sermon Mount, where Jesus preached this amazing sermon at a mountain. Other calls it the, the Blessing Sermon, because he spoke about eight blessings upon the people. What kind of things will make us blessed? And we're going to take some of these blessings and we're going to apply it into our families. Like blessed is the pure in heart, the peacemaker, yeah. We want to be peacemakers. We want to hang around peacemaker. We want our family to be peacemakers, not peace takers. Somebody say amen. All right. So let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, and that's where we are going to base the blessing for today, which is going to be the first blessing of this series, Having Blessed Family, Finding B in Family. And I want you to raise your hands, and this is our declaration. Come on, raise it up, raise it up. Let me see your hands. This is our declaration. Say, this is the word of God. I believe it. I receive it. And I conceive it in Jesus' name. And this is what it says. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for. Wait a minute. You got to help me better than that. Let's try because it's going to be good here this morning. Let's try it again. Blessed are those who hunger and. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shake somebody again and tell them change your appetite i'm telling you if you want to be blessed the first thing that jesus says we have to change is our appetite if we want to have blessed family we gotta make our family hungry but we have to make them hungry for the right thing we have to hunger and thirst for righteousness okay so it is, it, is, it, is, it is our job to hunger and thirst for righteousness. It is God's job to fill us up. Because it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. All right? They will be filled with righteousness, and we will be blessed. Raise your hands just for a second. Father, I thank you for today's word. You're going to be speaking into our hearts. Father, we come against every demonic attack that is standing against our home, against our people, our family, even those that do not know you yet. We are prophesying. This year should be a year of salvation for our parents, our brothers and sisters. Yes. Yeah, somebody's believing it. Our sons and daughters, we are going to have whole family, complete family, serving you, loving you. Father, those that are at the brink of, 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 of destruction, of divorce, of dysfunction, we declare a word of blessing and fulfillment. We shall be filled because we are going to hunger for the right thing. If you're hungry for God, just make some noise and more and shout hallelujah yes so raise your hands raise your hands raise your hands raise your hands i want you to say my role is thirst for god okay that's your role god's role is to fill you up huh god is not going to fill you up nor your family nor your future if you don't hunger and thirst for righteousness and it is possible to change our appetite, people, because we got to ask ourselves, what are we hungry for? What is, what, what is our family? In, in my home, what do we hunger for? Let me ask you, in your home, what do you hunger for? Huh? Maybe, and let's be honest, come on, if, if you answer, don't, don't answer me, but, but please answer that question to yourself. In your home, what do you guys hunger for? 
Huh? Maybe the, 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 the most things they do at your home is watch TV. Maybe you're hungry for TV. Maybe everybody is in social media 24-7 and, and they just disconnect them when they're not sleeping. Yeah, maybe, maybe you even sit at the table to eat and everybody's on their phone and nobody's looking at anybody's faces. You are hungering for social media, for Facebook, for Twitter, for maybe, maybe, maybe the family is hungering for attention. Huh? Or for looks, just for a look. Okay, come on, come on, guys. You know, we got we to gotta, we gotta look like a Christian family. You know what I mean? Uh, we, we, we are about to get, we are about to get to church, guys. Okay, and you've been cursing the whole way. Who am I speaking to this morning? Come on. And now you're entering into the doors and you just put the face, the Christian face. All right, guys. Come on. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, sister, come on. It's all good to see. Oh, the Lord is good, sister. Oh, yeah. And, and you've been cursing the whole way. Am I prophesying today? Come on, somebody. Who, who, who are we hungering and really thirsting for? What are we hungering and, and really thirsting for? Because whatever we hunger for will fill us up. Oh, my God. I just said something, right? I, I hope you got it. Whatever we are hungering for, that's what we're going to get. And we're going to be filled with it. If it's crazy stuff on TV, that's what we're going to get in our house and our family. Our actions, behavior, patterns are going to reflect what we are watching all the time. Over and over is going to become part of our subconscious because that's what we hunger for. But God says, if you want to be blessed, this series title is Finding Letter B in Family. Anybody could say like, well, I mean, there is no letter B in family. Well, I don't know about your family, but my family, you will find letter B in family because I'm going to have a blessed family. Yeah, baby, my family is going to be blessed. And if I want to have a blessed family, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure we hunger and thirst. For righteousness. And God's job is going to be to fill us up. As real Christians. You know, real Christians. Real. Somebody say real Christianity. So, 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 so let's talk about things that don't work, okay? Let, let's talk about. Because if we're going to thirst, like, like really thirst and hunger for God, for righteousness, we got to do it right. And not try to fake it along the way. So let's talk about this. Let's, let's talk about what doesn't work. Shake somebody and tell them what doesn't work. Legalistic Christianity does not work. Somebody say, it doesn't work. If you try it in your family, trust me, I've seen it over and over and over and over again. And it does not work. So, so what is legalistic Uh, or religious Christianity, how do, we, how do we live it in our house? Well, when you have a family that just follow rules, might be a legalistic Christianity. It's not really, it's not real Christianity, it's not real relationship. You're just implementing and pushing rules. Well, you know what? In this house, we don't smoke. You know, that's the rule. In this house, we don't chew. In this house, we don't do. Don't do, 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 don't do. And we have a whole list of things we don't do in this family. And why we don't do it, mom? Well, I don't know. But I, don't, I don't know, but we just don't do it, okay? <laughs> Legalistic Christianity. It doesn't work. Legalistic Christianity is going to develop rebellion. In your children's heart. Come on, somebody have to help me out better than this. If you know what I'm talking about. It's going to develop rebellion. Why? Write this down. Because rules without relationship lead to rebellion. I'm going to say it again. Rules without relationship leads to rebellion. I do believe in rules. Rules are necessary. But you cannot detach rules from relationship. 
So the number one thing in my home is not rules. It's not things we do and don't. The number one thing in my home shall be relationship. When I have a relationship, even the Holy Spirit is going to guide me of, on, on what I need to do and what I don't have to do, what I shouldn't do because there is a relationship. So I'm going to value in my home relationship over rules. Somebody say amen. That's a good place to clap your hands right there. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling that. That is legalistic Christianity. Right? No, you, you shouldn't you, sh you shouldn't wear that. Well, why? Well, because that's what we do in this church. I mean, in this house, we don't wear that stuff. That's the rule. You're creating rebellion instead of creating relationship. Rules are important. But they are not more important than relationship. Relationship will lead you to the right following of rules. So we have on one side legalistic Christianity. But then we have lukewarm Christianity. Somebody knows what I'm talking about? You're neither hot nor cold. You're just like right in the middle. Like, like you are on a gray area. You are neither dark nor white. It's just, it's just like kind of floating in between. We believe in God, but, but you know, it's, we go to church, and, and it, 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 I've seen it that, that, especially in this country, in this country, like I come from a nation, Venezuela, it's not like that anymore, but when, when I'm not going to say when I was small, but when I was, when I was younger, I don't know why you always laugh about that, Sharon, it's not like you're taller than me, all right? If you have not noticed that. Anyways, um, yeah, in, in Venezuela, um, when I was a children, when I was younger, when I lived there, listen to me. To say you are a Christian was, was to say you, are, you had a contagious sickness or disease. You know, like, like everybody in school will bully you. Are you following me? So, so. But in this, in, this, in this nation, to say you're a Christian is like anybody can say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. Of course I'm a Christian. You know, but, but I, know, I know about other nations that to say you're a Christian means death. Come on, help me out. It means you, <laughs> they, they're going to get you. In, in, in March, we're going to have our, our healing crusade in Pakistan. Come on, clap your hands because it's really it's gonna be amazing 10,000 people in Pakistan it's gonna be just awesome we have over 200 pastors involved it's gonna be amazing and 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 there are places in Pakistan that to say you're a Christian means your whole family is gonna be under the threat of death but not here not here anybody here in this nation can say I'm a, actually Christianity has become this kind of this kind of a cultural thing you know this, this family has been a Christian for a long time. That means we go to church every now and then on Sundays. And, you know, we believe in Jesus Christ, but we don't really follow. Come on, somebody. I mean, I mean, we are Christian. Come on, I, I, need, I need to see your right hand. Let me see your right hand. Because there's a big difference because being, be, uh, between being a, a, a Christian and being, somebody say, christ Center. Uh, somebody say Christian. Christian. I don't want to have a Christian family. That, just, that is not enough. Just to say that in this nation, just to say that is not enough. Somebody say a Christian family. No, not a Christian family. I want to have a christ Center family. Jesus is the center of this home. Anybody else with me is, 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 is excited about that? We got to have a christ Center family. It's not only believing that Jesus Christ exists, but it is making him the center of everything we do. That's how we hunger and thirst for righteousness. And if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, it is God's promise that he will fill us up. Whew. And, and I'm excited that he doesn't say what, what is he going to fill us up with. You know why? Because he's going to fill us up with anything we need. That's a good place to clap your hands and say, I am man, I believe it. So I'm not only believing in God, I am living in God. 
I'm not only believing, I am living. I'm not believing, I am living. Somebody say living. That means that in this family, we are going to pray. And we're not going to pray as a rule. My kids, you know, let me tell you something about my kids. Sometimes, um, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm in a conference. It has happened two or three times. I'm in the middle of a conference somewhere around the world. And it is 3 p.m. where I'm at. And it is 8 p.m. right here in Philly. And we are on FaceTime. I am behind backstage just about to come out and give conference and I'm speaking with my kids they're about to call my name and I tell them okay babies I love you love you love you so much I gotta go and they say and they be like papa but we haven't prayed we haven't prayed and they're five and three but why why do they have an attitude because we're the perfect home we're the perfect family no it's not it's not because of that because because prayer is part of who we are is not a rule. I'm not telling them, hey, kids, you know, you have to pray every day. No, I am showing them by example that praying is what we do and who we are as a family. Come on. We have to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Praying is what we do. You know, having that kind of culture that you are what? a movie in a theater somewhere with your kids with your family and all of a sudden you just stand up and you'll be like kids we have to walk out and they understand that you're walking out because what you are watching on that big screen does not go in accordance to your belief your lifestyle what you do as a family so you know what I mean this doesn't really go with what with what we are who we are so let's just go and let's find something else fun to do you're not imposing a rule you are living a relationship oh my god a family that hunger and thirst for righteousness we're investing this family we know how to serve we love serving you know because sometimes we serve out of ah how can i say it because uh, I am obligated. I, I feel obligated to serve in the church. So I, I feel obligated to serve in the church, and I got to get there early to serve. Hey, kids, you, you kids not ready yet. You know, I mean, you know I got to serve. You know pastor's going to get on my... God, they're going to tell me, oh, God, I'm going to get there late because of you. You know I got to serve. You know they're telling me to serve. What, what kind of message are you sending your kids? Huh? So, so is serving an obligation or is it something you enjoy doing not only personally but as a family? You know, I've, I've had, I have uh, various um, occasions in which I have to minister to a couple because one of the, of, of the either the wife or the husband don't want to come to church anymore. And when I go into the root of why he or she don't want to come anymore, it's because the one that is a stronger Christian keeps talking about negative stuff. You're not hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And what you are bringing to your family is the negative idea of what serving God should be like. So I am going to take care of my heart, right? Listen, my heart is very important. The Bible says that out of our heart flows the issues of life. Come on, somebody. If, what, if I want to have good issues in my life and not bad issues in my life, I got to have a good heart. Anybody, anybody here is following me? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guard my heart. Heart. the Bible says keep your heart above all things so I'm gonna guard it I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna fight for it but but if I fight for my heart if I keep my heart that means I'm not going to allow anybody to talk to me bad against the gospel against Jesus Christ against the church listen to me I don't care what you think the problem is not what you say the problem is what gets into my heart so I have to protect my heart because my heart is important so if I protect my heart because I love myself do I love my kids sometimes we gotta protect our kids from our own heart our husband and wife our parents from our own tongue protect 
their heart. Mm. Is there something you're not comfortable with? Pray about it. Because if you keep slashing that stuff in your home, what you are doing is you're creating the wrong culture where people are going to be like, man, I don't want to go to church. I mean, there's too much stuff. Like, it, that's, that's, that's not what I want to do for the rest of my life. But what kind of family do I want to have? A family that is crazy to go to church, that wants to go to church, that, that needs to be in church. Hallelujah. Yes. And, 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 and Pastor Sharon knows this. Uh, we, one of my... My priority as a pastor is having a, an amazing, exciting, incredible kids' church. You know, I mean, and, and you can notice that as soon as you come into the door, the first thing I wanted to do, I broke the whole thing. I took everything out. We took the floor out, and we did a playground. And, and, some, and sometimes we, we're working outside, and, and somebody's walking by, and they look inside, and they see that playground inside, and they're like, whoa, <laughs> What is, is this a church? Is this a, ch I thought this was like, like McDonald's or something like, or, or Chick-fil-A or something. I mean, there is a playground when you come in. Like, I mean, if the world is targeting our kids, why, why shouldn't we? I wish I was. I wish I had someone. If the world knows how to target our kids, why shouldn't we? So, you know, I'm, 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 we're trying to make it fun, and, and we have meetings. How can we make it fun for our kids? So I believe to a, to a certain level we have succeeded in this. Why? Because, because I'll tell my kids, okay, guys, it's time to get up. We're going to go to school. Ah, school again. Man, but when I want to get him excited, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, and then we're going to church. Okay, all right, and we're going to church. But we are creating that culture. You know, it's not something that comes out of the blue. I am intentional about it. I want to have kids that hunger and thirst for God. They are not having a legalistic Christianity or a lukewarm Christianity. The Bible says, Jesus says that when you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, he will throw you out, spit you out of him. I don't want that. Do you want that? I know you don't. So, 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 so. We're not just a Christian family. We are a, come on, try with me, Christ-centered family. I love what Psalm 63 one says. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. Somebody say, I seek you. I love, I love this part. I love this part. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no Water. I love it. I, I love it because usually when we go to dry places, we, 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 we tend to go away from God instead of getting closer to God. And, and, and what David is saying is, listen, when I am in trouble, when things are not going my way, that's when I hunger and thirst the most. I do not stop going to church when things are not coming my way. That's when I want to go even more because my heart thirsts for you. I earnestly wants to seek you I thirst for you my whole being longs for you but wait there's more how about we try it we try it this way instead of an I let's kind of do a family edition all right and we're gonna we're gonna change it for we can we do that okay let's try it you God are our God earnestly we seek you we thirst for you our Hope belongs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. We love you. We want you. Our family wants Our kids wants to come. What They want to serve because they've seen me serving. They've seen me having fun while I serve. They want to. They want to serve God not because I'm imposing a rule, but because I am, I'm, I'm showing them that by having a relationship with God, it is the best kind of life you can have. There is nothing better than that. And somebody is making some noise because they believe it with me. So you are a God. You are, come on, come on, come on, come on, raise your hand. And let's try it, let's try it. Say, you, God, are our God. You're our God. Oh, God, you're our God. Can, can we try that? Oh, God. Can you try it again? Oh, God. Can you think of how ridiculous 
anything else will sound like, oh, TV. You are our God. We earnestly seek for the next series on Netflix. I got I to gotta get my dancing move on. Come on, Nelson, you got to teach me. All right. Yeah. Ah. Oh, oh, Netflix. You are our God. I can wait to church to be over so I can go and earnestly seek you. Come on, somebody. Don't laugh. You know, you know what I'm saying? The truth. What is really, who, who is really your God in your house? Huh? Who, who is it? Oh, car. You are our God. I can't wait to just go and wash you and give you some love and have you really clean and crispy so people can see you. You are our God. Oh, John. You are our God. No one else can touch my time, not even my kids. I got to work, 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 and can't go to church every week because you are our God. Who are we really hungering and thirsting for? For, for whatever we are hungering for is going to fill us as a family. So how do we develop a family that is hungry and thirsty for God. Three things very quickly before we finish. Number one, write it down. Involve God in your daily conversations. Oh, yeah. Involve God. You know, I, I, was, I was saying this on Friday. And listen to me. It's not, it's, it's not that I want to show you that we have the perfect family because we don't. We have issues like everybody. But I have been intentional on my kids really loving God, I've been intentional about it. So I see results. And, and if, you, if you speak with, with Shaddai, Shaddai, he's five years old. I was telling you this on Friday. I am amazed. I am amazed at what's going on. It is really working because God is part of our daily conversation. And he's only five. And let me tell you something. I, I said, if you came on Friday, I said this on Friday. We can be speaking about anything. And out of the blue, he'd be like, Papa, 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 did you know that Jesus loves us so much? We, we, I mean, we can be speaking about video games. And all of a sudden, he'd be like, Papa, did you know that if you believe Jesus in your heart, he can live in your heart? And I'm like, wow, this is really touching me. This is really blessing me. And let me tell you something. It's not that we have the perfect family. Oh, pastors, that you have the perfect I know we have. You have the perfect family. Right? But you don't know what we're going through. You don't know what kind of family we have. We don't know where we come. Let me tell you something. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. You can make your family a christ center family. What do you do? Involve God in your daily conversations. You're driving and you see a sunset. You don't have to be like, oh, that sunset is cool, man, right? Not, involve God. Be intentional about it. Man, God gave us such a beautiful sunset today. Come on, kids, look at that. Don't we have a fun God? Look, he did all these colors and all that so we can enjoy it. Our God is fun. He likes color. He likes stuff. Involve God. You don't got to be religious about it, but involve God as much as you can in your daily conversations. You're going to be a Christ-centered family versus just being a Christian family. There's a lot of Christian families that are going nowhere. There's a lot of Christian families that are not blessed. You're not only going to be blessed. You are going to be Christ-centered and blessed in every single way. More than abundantly, somebody shout hallelujah. The second thing I have to do is make church no negotiable. We don't negotiate going to church. You know, it's, it's, it's not something that, that we do sometimes and, and sometimes we don't. No, no. Church is who we are. Church is what we do and we can't live without it. We enjoy it. We enjoy worshiping God. We enjoy the whole experience. And when we are not there, something is missing. I am going to thrive. I am going to be intentional about having my family see church. As non-negotiable. And I'm going to make it fun. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be talking about negative stuff. Even if there are negative things. I'm going to pray about it. But I'm going to guard my heart and my family's heart. Oh my God. This is good this morning. <sighs> and show how seeking 
and serving God is fun. Come on, shake somebody and tell them, make it fun. Make it fun. Having Jesus as, as the center of your family, it is fun. It doesn't have to be boring. Come on, somebody. Anybody believes it with me? But, but I have to show it. Show how seeking and serving God is fun. Prayer is a daily routine. It's not something we do sometimes. It's who we are. Prayer is who we are. Worship is who we are. Oh, my God. If, 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 you, if you are having a hard time remembering when was the last time you prayed with your family for one of your kids' struggles in school or whatever it is, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. If you're having a hard time yourself, thinking about what, what was the last time we prayed as a family. And I'm not talking about, oh, oh, Lord, yes, bless this food, amen, let's eat. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about prayer. You know? Like, like this, this, I love, I've loved that, that prayer. This is how we fight our battles. Worshiping is how we fight our battles. Guys, come over here. Yeah, that you, that you, that what happened in school, that happened in school. Come on, I know how to fix it. Let's pray right now. I know Jesus is going to help you with this. He's real, you know. Just help him out. And we show them how seeking God is not a religion, but it is a relationship that we enjoy as a family. But it's something we have to be intentional about it. Come on, shake somebody and tell them, be intentional. Be intentional about it. We have to. We have to. So, so quiet times are part of our culture. Worshiping God. When, you are, when you're in trouble, when you have problems, come on, that is the perfect. Maybe God is allowing that problem so you can show your family who God is. So they can see that when you pray as a family, no demon in hell is strong enough to withstand what God is about to do with you. Maybe it's the perfect occasion and God is allowing you trouble and trouble again so you can step up and be like, family, I'm going to show you that prayer works. Come on, stand on your feet, shake somebody up and tell them prayer works prayer works seeking God works serving God works this is how we fight our battle we fight it by worshiping God yes we fight our battles not fighting each other as husband and wife as, as father parents and kids we fight our battles by coming together by worshiping together by praying together that's how we fight our battle because Jesus is the center of who we are and what we do look at this oh. I, my, my baby girl is just she's just three years old oh and I've missed her so much this weekend And my boy, we went, we went in the mountain and we just came. We just arrived here. I, have, I, I can't wait to see them. Um, and, and of course, I think about them all the time. And um, I, I was in the marriage retreat, right? And I was dancing with my wife. Yes, we danced. <laughs> I was dancing with my wife at the marriage retreat. And, and, and something just came to me and it really touched my heart because I was, I, I was missing my little girl. And I was like, man. What, what is going to be like to dance with my daughter when she gets married? Oh, my. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I think I'm going to cry the whole way. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And I know she is going to marry right. But you know what? One thing I'm, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to tell you. You know what? You, you can't have sex if I'm married because that's not a rule in this house. Because I'm not going to have to. I'm not going to have to. Oh, I wish I had somebody that is following me here. Today. I'm not going to have to because I am going to show her what serving God is like. That there is nothing better than that. And it's going to be organically. It's going to be her decision not to do it. 
Or oh, somebody can say, oh, but you know what? I mean, that, that's weird. Like, I'm a kid, what? I mean, 18, 19, 20, and, and, and don't have sex yet? I mean, that, that's, your kid is not going to be normal. Well, let it be. <laughs> Let it be a weird kid, but I would rather have a weird kid that is not having eight sexual partners that, than a normal kid that had 12 sexual partners before she got married. I wish I had somebody. I need to be intentional about this. I have to, man, Jesus. Well, Pastor, you know, that's just weird. Well, guess what? Then I'm going to be like Joshua. Then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. But I already made my decision. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve God. We will live for him. Come on. Hold up. Hey, Jesus, be the center. a Christian family. We are a Christ-centered home. We're not going to be legalistic about it. We're not going to be lukewarm about it. We're going to be relational about it. God is going to be who we are and what we do. Not because we are obligated to do it, but because it's what we enjoy as a family. Oh, but pastor, I make too many wrong decisions. You know what? It's, it's just too far for me. Like, I don't think, that, yeah, there is hope. It is possible. And you can start today. And this year can be the best year for your family you ever had. Oh, I wish I had somebody that can really clap their hands and believe it. By making Jesus a part. Not a part. The center of our home the center of our home. Let's pray this morning. Father, I thank you for this word. This next couple of weeks, we're going to be speaking about families, blended families, single parent homes, marriage struggles, school problems, things we go through in every stage of our life, in every position we represent in our family. You have a place for us. Let us be filled with righteousness, filled with joy and peace. You will do it. You will fill us up. Fill us up with the fruits of your spirit, joy, peace, meekness. Because we are going to hunger and thirst for you. Thanks for watching. Two things I want to remind you. You can hit the subscribe button so we can stay connected or the give now button so you can support this ministry and we can be able to keep transforming life.